hope, peace, joy, and love. Four candles, four promises continually offered to us by God, and all of them manifest in this one we light tonight, the Christ candle. In Christ we find the hope of transformation, the peace that follows justice, the joy of self-fulfillment in community, and the love that encompasses us in all our diversity, empowering us to make our own unique contribution to this world. In Christ we find light and life, and the courage to be like Him, answering His call and following in His footsteps. We rejoice in God's steadfast presence in our lives and in God's unique presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, who was born of Mary, growing through childhood into an adult ministry, in all his life manifesting the peace and the love and justice of God. His voice undimmed by the centuries, his call and his promises as clear to us tonight as it was to his disciples so long ago. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night, in our hearts, our minds, our very lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Emmanuel. Amen. I am very blessed to welcome two good friends of mine to this congregation this evening, Rabbi Denise Egger and Rabbi Ellie Steinman. Both are colleagues of mine, but beyond that, they are also personal friends. I'm so honored to once again welcome Rabbi Denise Egger to lead us in our worship this evening, reading for us from the Hebrew Scriptures. O God, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your glory. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation. Thou hast increased their joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, as humanity rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, thou hast broken as in the day of Midian. For all the armor of the armed man in the tumult and the garments rolled in blood shall be for burning, for fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting One, Sar HaShalom, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his dominion, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Adonai of hosts will perform this. Selah. And so the scene has been set. Let's rise in body and spirit as we open worship. Angels, we have heard on high. Oh. 
Thank you. Please be seated. It is indeed a joy to welcome you on this, our Christmas Eve services. We have already had one this evening where our church was actually pretty full. And now we share together again for our 11 o'clock service, which will run through the midnight hour and into Christmas Day itself. A reminder for you that tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, we will be gathering for Christmas morning worship um, here, and we invite you to come back um, and to share Christmas morning with us as we continue to celebrate the birth of the one who came to teach us so much and who lives amongst us today. Welcome to you. It is a joy to welcome you, especially if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this evening. We are glad that you are here, and I am so glad. I know that we have friends from, uh, uh, from uh, Congregation Kol and Me um, who are here with us, uh, and so we welcome our Jewish friends amongst us. It's also good to have uh, Alia with us, and so it's good to have Muslim friends with us this evening. And uh, we also have friends from the Church of uh, Religious Science, or Spiritual Living, as we now call them. Uh, and so it's uh, good to have my good friend Rodney Scott here this evening, who's also the president of Christopher Street West. And uh, Uncle Tom Cobley and all. It is really a joy to welcome each and every one of you to worship this evening. We are delighted that you are here. As you came in this evening, you should have received your orders of worship, and on the front you will see the order for this evening's worship, and inside you will find a whole host of announcements and information, not only to make your visit here more comfortable, but also to enable you to know what is happening in our church, especially over the next few weeks. Uh, as you know, next Sunday is the last Sunday of the year, it will be the 30th of December, and we will be having our normal schedule of services, our 9, 11, and our 1.30 in the afternoon. And then we'll be coming back in the evening uh, to meet, meet and greet with our African-American community uh, as we celebrate Kwanzaa with them. Um, that's also followed by a potluck um, uh, to which you are more than welcome to come. And if you have not experienced a potluck with our African-American contingent of our congregation, uh, you have not yet lived. So we sincerely hope that you will want to come and to share that with us. We are so glad that you are here. There is much for us to get through this evening, um, but we are just delighted that you have chosen to spend a few moments of your Christmas season, your holiday season, that holy season with each and every one of us. So as we gather this evening, may I invite you now to turn to one another and offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome, as we affirm that God's presence is with us.
from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, taken from the message. The Word was first. The Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through God, nothing not one thing came into being without God. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. Verses 18 through 25, taken from the English Standard Version. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of God appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Thank you. 
lest ye marry gentlemen Let nothing you dismay Remember Christ our Savior He was born on Christmas Day He saved us all from Satan's power When we were gone astray What tidings of comfort and joy Tidings of comfort and joy In Bethlehem to Jewry This blessed babe was born He was laid within the manger On this blessed morn To which his mother Mary Nothing taken scorn. What oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Tidings of comfort and joy. Tidings of comfort and joy. Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came unto certain shepherds, brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. What tidings of come? and joy tidings of comfort and joy tidings of comfort and Twelve shining little boys Eight candles light the menorah Eight perfect little girls Six days it took to make the world Six ladies at their best And then upon the seventh day We lay them all to Tidings of comfort and joy Tidings of comfort and joy Tidings of comfort and joy God bless you merry gentlemen Let nothing you dismay Remember Christ our Savior He was Born on Christmas Day He saved us all from Satan's power When we were gone astray What tidings of comfort and joy Tidings of comfort and joy Tidings of comfort
This reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, taken from the contemporary English version, The Birth of Jesus. About that time, Emperor Augustus gave orders for the names of all the people to be listed in record books. These first records were made when Quirinus, the governor of Syria, everyone had to go to their own hometown to be listed. So Joseph had to leave Nazareth in Galilee and go to Bethlehem in Judea. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown, and Joseph went there because he was from David's family. Mary was engaged to Joseph and traveled with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby, and while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in baby's clothes and laid him on the bed of hay because there was no room for them in the inn.
Lectura del Santo Evangelio según San Lucas, capítulo 2, versículos del 8 al 20. Versión Palabra de Dios para todos. Cerca de ahí, había algunos pastores que pasaban en la noche en el campo cuidando su rebaño. Y se les apareció un ángel del Señor. El esplendor de la presencia del Señor los rodeó y se aterrorizaron. Pero el ángel les dijo, no tengan miedo, traigo buenas noticias que les darán muchas alegrías a todos ustedes. Hoy, en el pueblo del rey David, les ha nacido un Salvador, que es el Mesías, el Señor. Como señal, encontrarán a un bebé envuelto en retazos de tela, acostado en en un pesebre. De repente, junto al ángel apareció una gran multitud de ángeles del cielo y todos alababan a Dios. Alaben a Dios en los cielos, que haya paz en la tierra para la gente que agrada a Dios. Cuando los ángeles se fueron al cielo, los pastores se dijeron entre ellos, vamos a Belén a ver qué ha sucedido y lo que el Señor nos ha anunciado. Así que fueron deprisa y encontraron a María y a José y vieron al bebé acostado en el pesebre. Cuando los pastores vieron, les contaron a todos los que se habían dicho, se había dicho acerca del niño. Todos los que escucharon se asombraron de lo que los pastores les contaron. Pero María reflexionaba sobre todo esto y trataba de entenderlo. Después, los pastores regresaron alabando a Dios por su grandeza, por todo lo que habían visto y oído. Todo había sucedido como se les había dicho. Before I give the message this evening, I first of all like to thank Nicholas who's interpreting for those who are deaf and hearing impaired this evening and to VNA who's made herself available to translate from Spanish into English simultaneously this evening. Um, and so we are extremely grateful to them. So if you would just show your appreciation. <laughs> and would you join with me in a moment of prayer? So loving, gracious, and holy one, we thank you for this moment in our church's life, this moment that we gather on this Christmas Eve, moving through the midnight hour into the Christ Mass, the time that we remember and recall the birth of a child entered into the earth to bridge between heaven and earth and to show us the ways of God. And so we ask, O oh Holy One, that you would be with us, bless us, anoint us, open our hearts and our minds so that we may be channels of that grace, of that wisdom, of that birth that occurred, but a birth that is not contained within just the pages of a scripture, but are contained within the pages of our lives so that no matter where our faith traditions may come from, we can still explore the values of the one that we call Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And so, Almighty God, now I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this night. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of the Holy One. Amen. So this is the moment we have been waiting for as we have culminated our journey over the last few weeks of the Advent series, a series that began for us right at the very beginning of December, a series that we brought to this congregation in, under the title of Christmas, It's Not Your Birthday. It was an opportunity for us to remind ourselves that in the midst of all of this month, that Christmas really is not our birthday, it's not our opportunity to write our Christmas list, to post it off to Santa or to whoever, or to perhaps write a list of things that we want to have or achieve for ourselves. 
that Christmas is not about the biggest gift under the Christmas tree from someone to us, or perhaps if we've had to create our own Christmas present and make it under our own tree because no one else has got one for us. But the Christmas is really not about us. Christmas really is about this gift of Jesus, this gift of a story given to us, the gift of a life, the life that bridged the divide between God and humanity and brought to us Emmanuel, God with us, a demonstration, a living demonstration of God's passionate love for all of God's creation. And so we reminded ourselves of the gifts that were placed under the tree, not by us, but by the Jesus that we worship. The gifts of love and of joy, of hope and of peace. We challenged ourselves as a church and as a congregation to think about how we might be able to unwrap those gifts this year and to make them a part of our own life's stories. To remind ourselves that this is really a faith of values. Even though the church may have made it a faith of a dogma, it really is a faith of values. Living them out in our everyday living experience. Reminding ourselves over and over again that those values should be embodied by all peoples of faith and to allow those values to be the bridge builders, the things that will tear down walls and build up bridges of understanding one of the other, living and breathing that into the world. And so I challenged each of us to think about Christmas morning, about what gift we really want under our tree. Is it the latest iPhone or the iMac or anything else that we might want to give advertisement to this evening? <laughs> or is it this gift of a value that will transform our lives as we move through this day and this year? We then moved on to a second of those series that talked about this expecting of a miracle. And we so often think about miracles as the miracles that we see in the, the Christian and the Hebrew Bible. The miracle of the parting of the Red Sea, the miracle of feeding the 5,000, the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. The many miracles that we see contained within Scripture, but so often we look only for those big miracles when there are many other miracles that we see in the sacred text of our lives. The miracle of really loving one another. Perhaps the miracle of just even having a breath in your body that you might be able to wake up in the morning. The miracle of sharing with one another. And we have certainly experienced that in our church, specifically over these last couple of years of recession. As we have witnessed that there is an opportunity for us in there to really put into practice that which we preach and that which we are called to live, to share with one another. That when one is without, we must share to give to the other knowing that that really is that opportunity of paying it forward and sharing as community. That really those are the miracles that we get to learn, especially in a culture that teaches us to be me, 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 rather than share, share, share. We've seen that certainly within our congregation over these last few weeks, as many of you have been bringing in your coins in the brown bag sack lunches that we sent you home with at the beginning of Advent, bringing those coins back into the church so that we can translate that into money and therefore into food to feed the homeless folk that will be on the streets here in Los Angeles, not only tonight, but in the days to come. Bring that gift in just our loose change that perhaps we had from the latest Starbucks or from the latest coffee bean and tea leaf or wherever else you might purchase your coffee in the morning. I do hope I'm on commission this evening. I seem to be advertising a lot. We've certainly seen that miracle in the toys that we have collected this year. Just a simple sack of toys at the altar this evening but a room full of toys behind the sanctuary that are getting ready to go to the, to the Sunset Clinic, to those who are uh, lender-privileged and certainly not as privileged as ourselves. And later on in the month to be traveling down to Tijuana for our AIDS hospice and our orphanage that we have partnership with. Miracles of Christmas, the miracle of selfless giving, the miracle of using our lives, telling the story of Christmas, not just in this season of Advent, 
but throughout this year to come. Last week, of course, was our lessons and carols, and what a joy it was to hear our music department do such an incredible job for us in our music, and we are so grateful to them. I heard many of folks say as they were leaving church last Sunday or the Sunday before that they didn't realize there was so much talent in this congregation. And I have to say, I didn't know that until I saw it come out that day. It was an amazing, amazing feast to the soul. And then this past Sunday, I shared in this series of sermons that we are called to give up on perfect. That so many of us think that in order to be acceptable to God, that we somehow have to be perfect. That we somehow have to have our lives all in order. That we somehow have to be completely forgiven, completely redeemed, completely loved, completely lived. But the reality is that this story of Christmas is not one of perfection. If it was truly a story of perfection, then Mary would not have been pregnant out of wedlock in a society that we know that she was born into. We also know that Jesus would have, or God would have planned it so much better that when Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem, there would have been a room ready for them. This is not a perfect story in a perfect world. This is a story of a God entering into the brokenness of our everyday living, the brokenness of who we are, the brokenness of this world, the brokenness, calling ourselves and calling Jesus to make the difference so that our own brokenness just as the brokenness of Mary and Joseph and all of the stories of characters in the story come with their brokenness, so we come with ours. And it is the Christ of Christmas, that spirit, that God that enters into us and enables us to surrender. And I believe that God is looking for perfection, even though we might be. But God is rather looking for folks who are willing to surrender themselves to the values that this Jesus brings to us and to allow those values to make the difference for ourselves. It is that God of Christmas that we are welcoming into our church, welcoming into our community, welcoming into our lives. And I don't know about you, but those values are the values that transcend all of our dogmas. They're the values that transcend all of our religions. They are the values that we hold in common. And they're certainly the values that I share with my Jewish friends and with my Muslim friends and with those of no faith whatsoever, but who experience the God consciousness, that Christ consciousness, that awareness of bringing peace to this world, enabling it to manifest itself through you and through me. And then this evening, we come to witness this scandalous love of God. Why do I call it scandalous love? I call it scandalous love because if you really look at the life of Jesus, he was a scandalous human being. This was not a Jesus who came to bring a love to those who thought they had it all together. This is a Jesus who came to demonstrate God's love to those who were on the margins of society. The woman who sat at the well and felt that she was neglected by the whole of the world, Jesus came and sat by her and said, tell me your story. And after the story was told, not that he was shocked, but only that he would hold compassion for her and realize that her life was as broken as everybody else's and that Jesus, that healing moment, would lift her up to restoration. The scandalous love that sat with blind Bartimaeus, feeling sorry for himself, wondering if he would ever see again, and who took mud from the pavement and just spat in his hands, rubbed it into a paste, put it on his eyes, and he could see. The scandalous love of a Jesus who would thumb his nose at religious authorities and be in that upper room with tax collectors and prostitutes. My kind of people. <laughs> who would be in that upper room to enjoy the company of those who were not seen to be fit by society standards, but for him, these were the very folks that he came to witness to. People like you and people like me. Ordinary folk. The folk who perhaps have had love withheld from them. Or the folks who are trying so desperately hard to find love, but love 
is all around us. It is that scandalous love that we come to experience this evening, but more than just to experience, to feel and to get in touch with so that it might offer to us that opportunity to go back out into the world and to allow that love to flow freely from us. The scandalous love that calls us as a church to rid itself of all dogma and to raise up the values of human life and human experience. The scandalous love that Jesus would call into the world is the scandalous love that we as folk who will follow Jesus have also been called to emulate and to model. And when the Christian church fails to do that, then it fails to represent the Jesus that we come to witness on this birthday. I wish not to offend any Roman Catholic who may be in the congregation this evening. And I would say this of any spiritual leader who is able to bring influence to this world. Many of you will know that the message of the Pope has been leaked to the press. One would say perhaps it was deliberately done so. And I know, and you know, if you have read the headlines, that tomorrow the Pope, who is the religious leader of many, many millions of Christians, will use this opportunity of peace and goodwill and bringing love together to say that homosexuals are the scourge of the earth and that we should fight marriage equality at all costs. Let me think, would Jesus say that in a message of scandalous love? It is time for the church to wake up to the reality of the one that it says that it follows and to know that the one that it follows is one that would challenge all discrimination, challenge all oppression, and would continue to sit on the margins of society and bring us to a new place of love and hope and peace and joy together one with the other. Rabbi Eli Steinman, you can report in Breakthrough Conversations that I mentioned marriage equality in my Christmas sermon this year. It is an opportunity for us to bring scandalous love. And my hope is that perhaps, just perhaps, this sermon this evening might find its way to the Vatican and might find its way to the Pope's doors, and perhaps he might have a rethink before tomorrow morning, although it's probably a little too late in Rome right now, to rework his words, as I would say of any spiritual leader. It was Dobson this week from Focus on the Family who said that the shootings in Connecticut were down to homosexuals in America. I tell you, if homosexuals are that powerful, we would have marriage equality now. <laughs> what a sad reflection on the scandalous love of Jesus Christ. The love that we come to witness in this congregation this evening is a scandalous love. A love that sees no borders. A love that sees no boundaries. A love that doesn't look at the color of our skin or the gender identity of who we are. The sexual orientation or the one that we choose to love, but rather unconditionally comes at this season of Christmas to enter into all human life and offer us a way. A way that would lead us to love. That's what we come to witness in this congregation. That's what we come to celebrate this evening. That's why we're able to draw ourselves together across the, 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 the political and the social and the religious boundaries and borders and lines because we've consented to live by the values of a faith that sets us free, a faith that liberates us from perfection, a faith that enables us to draw from our own God that lives within us and to allow that experience to drive us forward 
to bring this world to a better place, a better hope. I would say a better tomorrow morning. If we are doing anything less than that, we are not living up to the standards of the one that calls us to follow this evening. So I invite you, no matter where you are on your journey, whatever experience you may have had, to come this evening and to wrap yourself in scandalous love. To wrap yourself, overwhelm yourself, devour yourself with that scandalous love of a God that does not let us go, but a God who came at Christmas, came into the world, transcended the world, came to build a bridge between us and God and to show us just a way, a way to live in love and peace, in joy and hope, and to enable that to be the gift of Christmas. I'm ready for scandalous love. Can't wait to post that on the internet. <laughs> Some would say I've already been there, but um, not this evening. May that scandalous love of Jesus be that which we welcome for the honor and glory of the one we celebrate this night. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we thank you for your demonstration of love. You demonstrated through so many, but demonstrated for us this evening in this life of the one that we call Jesus. So help us, God, to examine his life. Help us to shed ourselves of the dogmas that so often separate us and to find the values of faith that can unite us. Help us to live in that scandalous, loving way so that we may truly be that vibrant and inclusive and progressive community of faith that we label ourselves and call ourselves to be. And in that scandalous love, might no one and might we not be turned away, but welcomed in as you welcomed the many many years ago. Now, almighty and loving God, I pray that you would take the words that have come from my mouth and not allow them to return to you without blessing us, affording us a moment of grace, reminding us of that great love that lives within us and that great love that you call us to live our lives with. May that be the hallmark of this gift that we call Christmas. Amen.
God, we thank you for the gift of the resources that you continually, faithfully, surprisingly show up for. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the continued wonderful gifts of joy and love and friendship and abundance and peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
We begin with such great hopes, such great dreams. We are going to be better to treat each other more fairly, to love more deeply. But we come to the manger once again, knowing our failings and aware of our brokenness. So let us take a moment to confess to the one who comes that our lives might be made new. God who comes to us, forgive us. When our shadowed lives dim your light, when the tinsel of Christmas means more to us than your truth, when our hearts of stone resist the pain and brokenness around us, when we care more about what is under the tree than the damage we do to your creation and to your children. Have mercy on us, healing God, so we might tear down the walls we have built to keep your love away, so we could seek your justice for our sisters and brothers, so our hearts would become cradles for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are assured of our forgiveness. Isaiah 62, 10 through 12 reminds us, go, go through the city, preparing for the prophet, repair, repair all the roads, filling in the holes, raising a banner for all to see. God has spoken to all his people saying to his daughters and sons, See, your Savior comes to make good on my promises, to bring redemption to all people. And we will be called God's beloved, the redeemed of the Lord. Porque Dios los, nos buscará para vivir en el nuevo Jerusalén, en donde nadie se queda atrás. Amen. This is the night that our hearts burst open with joy. This is the evening grace pours out of heaven. This is the moment when you come to make all things new, ever creating God. You shaped light out of the shadows of chaos. You molded your children from the earth looking in the mirror as you formed us, breathing your spirit into our empty lungs. Made for life with you in the garden you designed for us, we ran away into the wilds of the world, believing we were wiser than you, that we could make our own way. Yet your love never failed us. Your compassion was never taken from us. You would not abandon us in our foolishness. You brought us out of slavery into the land of promise and hope. You sent your prophets to speak to us of your disappointment in us and to remind us of your dreams for us. Your love for us was so passionate that you sent your only son to become one of us that we might be one with you again. So on this night, when heaven reaches down to caress creation with healing, we join the angel choirs who sang your glory, and with your people in every time and place, caroling the good news which is ours. Holiness is who you are, God of Christmas, and blessings come in Jesus Christ, your child of grace. finding no warm welcome at his birth. He knew the cold shoulder of friends at his death. Born in the rude confines of a barn, he knew the suffering of your children. Sent to be your word made flesh, he calls us to follow him into your new realm. Proclaimed by the prophet as our Prince of Peace, he died in the quagmire of human violence. By his death and resurrection, you have given new life to all creation. So as we gather on this holiest of nights, we proclaim that mystery we call faith. 
For it was on that night that Jesus gathered with his disciples, taking bread from the table, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body which will be given for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. As I like to think that we would remember him for his actions, his words, his teachings, and that our remembrance of Jesus the person would not eclipse the teachings and how we practice them in our lives, that we remember him in the action of taking in the bread. But also, likewise, following the supper, he took the cup from the table. Some say the cup of Elijah the prophet. He blessed it, and he offered it to him and said, drink this, all of you, and in doing so, remember me, for this is the cup of the new covenant. God is available to all. So when you take of this, remember the Jesus in your life. Remember the Jesus you are in the lives of others. Friends, as we join our hearts and minds and souls together, we ask prayers of blessings. Pour out your spirit upon us, wonderful counselor, and upon these, the gifts that we have to offer, those that you have given to us. We lift the broken bread, praying we would be made whole, at peace with one another, and reconciled to you. As we drink from the vineyard of grace, we believe that our salvation has come, and we are one with Christ, our flesh filled with his spirit of sacrifice, our spirits refreshed by his compassionate heart. As your joy flows into us, may we become a river, carrying your justice to the poor. As your hope sings in our hearts, may we carry your righteousness to all who suffer. And as we taste the promise of the feast you prepare for us in your kingdom, may we live for you and serve your children as we have been served by the child of Christmas, Jesus Christ, the Blessed One. And so here is scandalous love, that not one of us should be denied access to this table, that each and every one of us this evening is invited to this table. We in this Founders Metropolitan Community Church do not ask if you're a member of this church or indeed of any other Christian or other institution in order to come and receive of this meal this evening. We invite you to come forward and to receive a wafer which has been dipped in non-alcoholic grape juice, placed upon your tongue, and to receive a short prayer of blessing. We invite you to come alone with loved ones, with husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, significant others, significant others, those that you just met this evening and want to come. However you feel blessed this evening, come to this table. We ask that you follow the direction of the ushers and that we will get and serve with one another this feast of scandalous love. May I ask for the ushers to come forward, the acolytes and servers to join me at the table as we prepare this meal for the feast.
may have noticed as you came in that our building was tagged last night. On the side of our building it says, God is dead, long live God. Well, I want to thank our taggers because the God of religion is dead. Thank you. But the God of faith mm. lives in the experience of the values of Jesus. Long live God. God is fully alive in this place. That's right. And will continue to live as we live in peace. Thank you. May God bless us as we celebrate this night. And may we go in peace. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> I got whacked on my head.